Welcome to all of our seniors. I'm Minister Gregory Donaldson from Word of Faith International Christian Center. On behalf of our pastors, Bishop Butler, Pastor Deborah Butler, and Pastor Michelle Ferguson, we welcome you today. We prepared a special service for you, and we want you to enjoy it. Our nursing home and senior living Bible outreach team will be servicing you today. So know that anytime you view our services, we welcome you with love. God bless you. Here's the 
Psalm 73, 26 says, My flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Lord, I thank you that my heart physically and emotionally is healed. Hallelujah. I thank you, Heavenly Father, for forgiving all my iniquities and for healing all my diseases. And that is Psalms 103.3. Thank you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Jeremiah thirty seventeen says, But I will restore you to health and heal your wounds, declares the Lord. My body is healed. Psalms 30 and verse 2. O oh Lord, my God, I cried unto thee, and thou healed me. I'm healed from the crown of my head to the soles of my feet, nothing missing and broken in my body. My mind is clear and uncluttered. I have the mind of Christ. My eyes I can see, my ears I can hear clearly. My teeth, tongue, gums, throat are healed and whole. My heart beats with the right rhythm. My blood is clear and purified. My shoulder, back are healed. My arms, elbow, fingers are healed. My thighs, legs, but, uh, knees, bones, feet are healed, and soul are healed. I am the healed and not the sick. All of my organs, cells, tissues, joints, and bones are healed and whole. I'm healed and whole. I'm healed and whole. By Jesus' stripes, I'm healed from the crown of my head to the soles of my feet. In Jesus' name, amen. Hello to all the seniors in the nursing homes and senior living facilities, and to all of you who are viewing or just listening. I am so very honored to be with you today. My name is Minister Gregory Donaldson, and I will be delivering the message today. What a wonderful praise and worship that was and confession of faith. I pray that they blessed you just like they blessed me. So right now, before we get into the word today, I want to pray, and then I'll tell you about the word because it's an exciting 2021 New Year. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you today, Father, in your authority and in your name. We pray blessings over our seniors. We pray healing and restoration over our seniors. We pray for all those that are keeping and attending to them. We pray that your hand be upon them and favor goes before them. So we release our faith right now, Father, and declare victory because this is a year of winning and victory. And we give you all glory, our honor, and praise for the things that you're going to do in this service today. Amen. Wow. What a wonderful 2021 new year it is. And uh, for all those who, who viewed the first service, the, the uh, January service, we talked about the woman with the issue of blood and how her faith made her whole, and it was a tremendous blessing. So I would encourage you to watch that again, because our message today is, how do you get faith? And so we're going to, to review that message. But I want to thank you once again for viewing us. Uh, our first message, as I mentioned from the new year, was about faith making us whole, making your whole. And so my question was, and I got a question was, how do you get faith? And so in Hebrews 11:6, the word of God says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a reward of them that diligently seek him. God said, without faith, it's impossible to please him. Then you know, if God said that, then God made a way for you to get faith. And he made that way for everybody not just for me and not just for you. He made a way for everyone to get faith. Let's look at that. <clears throat> the Apostle Paul said that we are saved by faith in Ephesians 2 and 8. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is a gift of God. But how do you get that faith? How do you get saved? Well, I want to walk you through the scripture that kind of lays out for us how to get faith. 
you know, as being in a facility, being a senior and being in a senior living Bible facility. There are several things that, that, that we have to do, and there are several things that's required of you. To get to the, to the dining facility, you have to make an effort, or you have to be taken there, or you have to make an effort for yourself to go there. Or to get to a certain place in the facility, then there's some things that's required of you or some assistance. But God has already set that up for you to receive your faith. Let's start in Romans 10. Romans 10, 8 through 10, it says, But what saith, the word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart, that is the word of faith which we preach. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Well, that saved means sozo, delivered or perfect or healed, or preserved, or saved, to do well, or to make whole. And I'm going to repeat verse 9. It says, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved and have all of those things. Verse 10 says, for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Well, what are you talking about, Minister Greg? We are talking about how do you get faith. Verse 13 says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be, again, here the word is, saved, made whole, preserved, delivered. You have to have to call on the name of the Lord. Verse 14 says, How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed, and how shall they believe in him and who they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Well, after reviewing that, God has made this so simple. It's really three steps in there to receive your salvation, to, to, to enter into that faith covenant. One confess. Two, believe. Three, accept. And those are the things that we just went over as I, as I read that scripture. We confess with my, our mouth, then we believed in our heart, and then we accepted it, and God made a change in our, in our lives. Well, to whom is that faith, that salvation available to? So let's look at verse 13. Verse 13 says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now that whosoever is you, that whosoever is I. So I don't, I don't want you to say your name right now. So when Minister Greg calls on the name of the Lord, and as I did, I became saved. And you can do that right now yourself. So faith is available for everyone. That whosoever means everyone and anyone. Glory be to God. Our God is an awesome God. He made salvation available, a deliverance to be saved, to be set free, to be made whole. He made that available to everyone and anyone who wants it. That's an amen moment right there. Y'all say amen with me. Well, where does faith come from? You said it's available, you said we can have it, but Minister Greg, where does faith come from? Verse 17 says, so then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. I remember as a young man, and in, in, uh, in, in my, my, my mom, who's gone on to be with the Lord, bless her heart, strong in faith. But she would always be watching these, these, these church programs, these televangelists at night and so forth. And I would be wondering, why is Mama always watching that? Well, she's building up her faith. Faith come by hearing, hearing by the word of God. She kept hearing, she kept hearing, she kept getting stronger and stronger. And that faith, that strong faith I saw with her is because she kept hearing the word of God over and over. 
It's just like lifting weights or working out or trying to build your body up. If you do something one time, uh, you're not going to get a whole lot of results. If you do it two or three times, you may see some results. If you do it multiple times, 10 to 12 times, you may begin to see some major results. But if you do it a lot, I mean consistently do it, make it part of your routine, you will see a change in your lifestyle, a change in your physical presence. It's just like eating. If you ate something that wasn't good for you, it may not have an immediate effect on you. But if you ate that thing that wasn't good for you, that food, over and over and over, your blood pressure may raise up, your, 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 your diabetic level may raise up, uh, your anxiety and stress on your heart may raise up because you have now built that thing up because what you have repeatedly put in your body. That's how faith is. That's how the Word of God is. The Word said it's like a medicine. You continuously put the Word of God in your mouth and you do it over and over and over. You build your body up, you build your spirit up, and you build your faith up. Faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. So I encourage you, that first service from January, you go back and play that over. I would encourage you and all those who are attending to you to replay this service multiple times. Build yourself up over and over. The more you play it, the more you hear it, the more you watch it, the stronger you become in faith in any word that you, that you are uh, uh, believing for. Glory be to God. Build your faith up. Hear the word of God. Now let's talk a, a few minutes about faith for healing. We just talked about faith for salvation, for deliverance, faith for healing. I'm going to read to you from Acts 14, 7 through 10. And, and there they, I'm talking about Paul and, and Barnabas here, preached the gospel. They were out and they preached the gospel. They were preaching the gospel, sharing the word of God. And there said a certain man at Lystra, impotent in his feet. Well, impotent means his feet were not strong, because potent means strong. I mean, whoo, have you ever had something that's very potent? It was like there was an extra amount of something in there. Uh, uh, and it's a strong coffee. And they said, ooh, that's very potent. So it's very strong. So that means his feet was impotent. So that means his feet were weak. He was impotent, impotent in his feet. Being a cripple from his mother's womb who never had walked. So his feet were, were, were I say impotent, but impotent. I don't know how you pronounce it. Uh, 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 he was impotent in his feet. His feet were weak. He had never walked from his mother's womb. The same heard Paul speak, meaning them, who steadfastly beholding him and perceiving that he had faith to be healed. So Paul assumed he had faith to be healed. He saw that the man couldn't walk. And then, and then Paul said with a loud voice, stand upright on thy feet. And he leaped and walked. Well, most people who read this scripture think it's, it's, it's wonderful how Paul healed the man. Paul says, stand upright. He leaped and he walked. However, Paul did not heal the man. The man was not healed because Paul was an apostle. He was not healed through Paul's faith. The man himself had faith. His faith healed him. But Paul did three things. Paul preached the gospel in verse 7. It said, and therefore they preached the gospel. He shared the word of God. So the man heard the word of God. Then the second thing Paul did was he perceived that the man had faith to be healed. In verse 9, it said, the same heard Paul speak, who steadfastly beholding him and perceiving that he had faith to be healed. And then the third thing Paul did, he told the man to stand up and walk in verse 10. He said, he said it with a loud voice, stand up on thy feet, and he leaped and he walked. 
So all Paul did was read the word of God and believe the word of God and command it. Well, the man did three things as well. The man, he heard Paul preach in verse 9. So the man, we're talking about your faith for healing. He heard Paul preach. So you want to hear the word. You want to play that word, whether you're in the bed, whether you're sitting at the table. You want to keep the word of God in your ears. He heard Paul preach. Now, there's a lot of things you can hear in this world. There's a lot of things you can hear throughout the day. But as we're reading here, as we're going through, we're talking about your faith. How do you get faith? And the one thing that keeps coming up is hearing the word of God. Build your faith up. The second thing the man did was he had faith to be healed. He had faith to be healed. In verse 9 it says, The same heard Paul speak, who steadfastly behold him, and perceiving that he had faith to be healed. So the man did have faith. He believed he could be healed. He heard it, and then he believed it. Then the third thing, he leaped and walked. Verse 10 said, and with a loud voice, the, the, the Paul says, stand up on thy feet. And he, the man, he leaped and walked. How do you get faith? That's what we're talking about. You hear the word of God. You believe the word of God. And then you act. That man heard Paul preach. He believed what he said. And he leaped and walked. He didn't just get up and walk. He leaped and walked. That tells me there was some type of excitement, some type of expectation. And I declare right now in the name of Jesus, as you are hearing this word, you're receiving the word of God. You're receiving healing throughout your body. You're receiving changes and things you've been desiring. And right now, by your faith, you allow yourself to act on it. This man, he leaped and he walked. I believe some of you are doing some things you had not been able to do. Some of you are moving some limbs that were not able to be moved before. In the name of Jesus, you have acquired your faith. All glory be to God. Where did the man get that faith? As I mentioned, he heard Paul speak. Romans 10, 9, as, 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 as we talked about, he heard Paul, Paul speak. He preached the word. He received the word. Glory be to God. We have heard the good news today regarding faith for salvation and for healing. So I want you to right now to receive that word of God. Receive that you are healed in the name of Jesus. By his stripes, you are healed. Receive right now that you, can, you have salvation available to you. And we'll discuss that further. But I want you to open your hearts and open your minds and hear this word over and over and let it build you up. If you have faith, then it will make your faith stronger. If you don't have faith, you join up with, with, with Jesus according to the scripture we just read, and you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth and connect that faith up with him and allow the manifestation of the things that you're believing to come to pass. So right now, I want you to say to yourself, I am healed by faith. I want you to say to yourself that I can walk by faith. I want you to say to yourself that Jesus is Lord by faith. The word says, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Well, when you speak, you hear yourself. So if you speak the word of God, you're ministering to yourself. So I encourage you to, to keep the word of God playing. Pray a scripture to yourself. Read a scripture to yourself. But keep the word of God coming out of your mouth into your ears. If there's no minister around, if there's nothing on television or radio, then you say the word of God. It will build your faith up. 
that will connect you to faith. Right now, all of you who are watching, I declare in the name of Jesus, you're whole, healed, set free, and delivered. The word of God. Receive it. Release your faith. Well, Minister Donaldson, I heard all that, but you mentioned in Romans 10 and 9 that thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus. I may have never done that. Some of you may have never done that, you're saying. But I believe right now that this is the opportunity for you. So I'm encourage each and every one of you who are viewing, if you have never accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, now's the time. I want you to kind of be quiet with me right now. Let's go before the Lord. I say to each and every one of you, I offer you an invitation right now. You want your faith to increase. You've had faith, but you have never done these things. You believe things. So I'm going to say according to Romans 10, 9, and I'd like to read that to my seniors because I want them to know that it comes from the Bible and not from a preacher. We've been taught if you don't see it in the Word of God that you are not obligated to receive it. But this is the Word of God. Romans 10, 9 says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. That's that word. Verse 10 says, For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So if you've never done that, if you've never confessed with your mouth and believed in your heart, and declare Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Well, we're going to do that today. This is your day. God loves you. We love you. And this is your day. You have not been forgotten about. Now, some of you are saying, I've done that, Minister Donaldson. But some things have happened and gotten me away from, from, from the word of God. Gotten me away from repeatedly hearing it or playing it or, or confessing it. You want to plug back up. 1 John 1, 9 says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Well, he can bring you right back in standing just like that if you confess under your breath unto him. He can plug you back up and build your faith back up. Remember what I said. The more you hear the word, the more you confess the word, the more you rehearse the word, the stronger you get in faith. The stronger your faith is, the greater that manifestation is for what you're believing. So for those who you who've never done that, I'm going to say a prayer, and I want you to pray with me. And those of you who have, we're going to pray as well. But right now, let's go before the, for the Lord. And those of you who've never done that, pray this with me. Dear Heavenly Father, I believe Jesus is the Son of God. I believe that he died for me. I believe he's risen and he's alive right now. He bore my sins for me. I confess with my mouth and I believe in my heart and declare Jesus as my Lord and my Savior. I am now, therefore, born again. Glory be to God. That's the most wonderful thing you could have ever done. Now, for all of you who've done that already, let's go before the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for our brother and sister, Father, as they come back into fellowship with you and they confess unto you the things that have, have pulled them away. We declare according to your word that you cleanse them of all unrighteousness and that you are faithful and just to forgive them of all sins. So all our sins have been forgiven. They are cleansed. The slate is wiped clean. The counter is clean. And we pray in the name of Jesus that they go forth with great faith. So we thank you and give you all glory, honor, and praise for the body of Christ. In the name of Jesus, we pray. I want to thank you for this awesome and wonderful service. I want you to keep the word in your mouth. 
Keep the word in your ear and keep the word in your eye. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. That's how you get faith. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. And remember what our bishop has taught us, to fight the good fight of faith.